Welcome to the Equestrian Perspective Podcast. I'm Felicity Davies and I'm here to simplify horse training and teach you absolutely everything you need to know about how to build both your own and your horse's confidence levels, form an amazing relationship together and feel empowered in any environment. And on this podcast, I'll be sharing my best advice, trainings and mindset shifts so you can truly connect with your horse and pursue your goals in a way that feels good for both of you. So get ready to embark on a new equestrian perspective and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so I've had a lot of conversations this week about setting boundaries with our horse and also using pressure with our horses and how to go about doing it because there are a lot of things that bubble up to the surface when we think about how much pressure do I use with my horse? How firmly do I set this boundary? How do I do it all? And how do I get out of my head during the process? So I want to dive into all of the above during this chat with you today and essentially dive into my perspective on the situation and some different angles that you can look at things from so that you can get a better understanding of what might be coming up for you and your horse and how you can move forwards in a way that feels good for both of you. Okay, so when we're setting boundaries with our horses, it's really about drawing a line in the sand and saying like, this is what I accept and this is what I don't accept. And it doesn't necessarily have to be like an overly emotional thing. It doesn't have to be like a mean thing. It doesn't have to be a super forceful thing. It's just like, um, it's just a boundary, right? And we do that with like children and dogs and people and things like that. We're like, no, you can do that. Yes, you can do this kind of thing, right? It doesn't mean anything bad. It's just about drawing a line in the sand. So that's that from the boundaries perspective. So maybe you might want to use boundaries with your horse if they are, barging in on you during feeding time or maybe if they are invading your personal space and you need to just draw a line in the sand to be like no 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 I want you to stand over there and can you please go over there right and for some horses you might have to set a really strong intention for some you might just be able to kind of offer a a subtle body language intention and that's enough Um, but every horse is going to be different based on how they respond to your energy and your pressure And the reason I say your energy and your pressure is because someone else can come in and play with your horse and your horse might respond completely differently for them because they have a different reinforcement history with that person and that person has a different sense of energy as well. So it's no one size fits all. And I also just want to throw it out there. Like if you're in a situation where your horse is like easier to work with for someone else than you, There's nothing wrong with you. It's like a super normal experience that you're going through because we have so much emotional connection with our horses. We have so much history with them that sometimes it can be harder to undo some of those patterns that 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 horse associates with us and that we associate with that horse. And there's more layers involved. Okay, so I just want to let you know that is normal. Even I go through that as well. So it's just I want to normalize this experience. So that's that from a boundaries perspective. Then what we've got is a pressure perspective of like, okay, if you're asking a horse to move or do something using pressure, so this is for people predominantly focusing on just using negative reinforcement, which is when you take something away, which is where the negative comes in. You take something away in order to reinforce your horse and basically tell them, yes, keep doing that behavior. Because in that situation, pressure is defined as being slightly aversive. Um, or it can be a lot aversive depending on how much pressure you use. So you apply a pressure, the moment your horse does what you want them to do, you release the pressure, okay? So then your horse learns, okay, when the pressure is applied in order to remove the pressure, I do this, okay, happy days, all right? So it's like when you put your legs on if you're riding and then the moment your horse steps forward, you take your legs off and the horse learns, oh, okay, whenever she touches me with her legs, I'm to step forward, okay? So... Now we've got boundaries, now we've got pressure, and now we let's talk about like why they're important. And some people choose not to work with a lot of pressure and instead they work with positive reinforcement. So they're working with a lot of food rewards and scratches, predominantly food rewards, and you can get a lot done. But I still think even in that situation, you're using subtle forms of pressure and that pressure could be just your energy, the intention, and things like that that you bring into the session. However, when we're working with negative reinforcement, we really want to 
like I said before, set these boundaries with our horses around like what is and isn't acceptable in terms of what we're willing to um, put up with. Like you wouldn't just let your horse, like, so your boundaries might mean like, okay, I don't want my horse to like come into my personal space bubble as I'm feeding them. I don't want my horse to rub their head all over me as I'm standing still and just like push into me or nip me or bite me and things like that. Now, it's not to say that you're going to punish your horse if they do those things. It just means we're setting things up for success. So if you know that this is a boundary of yours, then you go, okay, well, I want to set it up so that my horse doesn't come into my personal space bubble when I'm feeding them. So how can I teach my horse this behavior ahead of time? And then let them know that that is what I would like them to do. Stay out of my bubble. Same goes like, okay, if I'm standing still, my horse creeps towards me. How can I let them know that that's not acceptable? So you would teach them like a backup to body language cue to say, okay, if you're creeping towards me, I want you to come out of my space, please. And you ask them until they go out of your space. It doesn't mean that you need to be forceful. It doesn't mean that you need to be like overly emotional and like yell at them or anything like that. You're just asking them and saying like, no, 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 that's not what I accept. Um, And it's like with your dog, if they kind of like go into an area, you go, no, 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 not allowed in that room. You have to go back out of that room. (laughs) And your dog knows, right? Especially when you've set that boundary with them. Um, So we really want to set these expectations with our horses and with ourselves. So we've got our boundaries established in our minds And in order to avoid having to use excessive amounts of pressure or being too loud with our cues or our behavior, um, we want to set ourselves up for success. So like I said, making sure our horse is far enough away from us, making sure that we can move their body in a way that allows us to get them out of our space. If they're a horse that tends to nip or bite or things like that, potentially making sure they're not in a position close enough to do that, right? So it's about prevention is better than cure, right? So when we've got these these boundaries established, then we're going to avoid those situations occurring, right? So they're really, really important about what you will and won't accept. And we always want to make sure we're listening to our horses, we're taking their behavior into consideration, but we can also ask them to do things that we would like them to do. Like essentially we are training horses at the end of the day. It's okay to ask them to do things, but it's just about acknowledging how they respond um, and making sure that we're not like forcing them to do these things, you know? So it's just, there's going to be a different energy behind different asks. Um, And it's just about tuning into what are your values? What do you feel comfortable doing in that moment? How much pressure do you feel comfortable using? And for your horse, how do you feel like they would best receive an ask? So if you apply a cue, do you feel like your horse needs more time when you ask your cue to respond, maybe they need to process it a little bit first. Do you feel like your horse picks things up pretty quickly and you can ask a little bit quicker? Do you feel like your horse needs a really low level of pressure because they're very sensitive? Or do you feel like they need a little bit of a clearer ask in terms of energetic pressure and body language to actually listen to you, right? So there's all of these things that we can consider. Um, And if you're in the situation where you're like, okay, Well, I've gone from the train of thought of being like, okay, show my horse who's boss, make them do it, all of that. And I never want to go back there. Like that felt really wrong to me. And now I'm in a situation where I'm on the other end and I'm like being so passive with my horse and just letting them walk all over me in a way. Like how do I find the right middle ground? Because you might be worried about damaging your relationship with your horse. You might be worried about making a mistake You might be worried about using too much pressure and doing the wrong thing and all of the above. And I just want to let you know that your horse is always going to be the best judge of what you're doing. If your horse is feeling comfortable, if they respond to your question, if they're willing to, if you've got a good relationship bank account, meaning like they're happy to be caught, they enjoy spending time with you, they seem pretty happy, all of those things. If that is the case, I'm going to tell you that what you're doing is probably actually okay, right? However, if you do something with your horse and then they seem out of sorts, they don't seem happy, they're not willing to be caught, all of those things, then you're going to need to adjust your approach because something was off, right? So I just want you to always zoom out and be like, okay, how's my relationship with my horse? How are they feeling about the situation? And if they're good, just 
sink into and ground into that fact that they're good, they're okay, and you're doing a good job, right? So when we're setting these boundaries with our horses and when we're working on um, being perhaps clearer with our intention, with our pressure cues and things like that, another thing that comes up, like I mentioned, is the mindset stuff, right? Sometimes it feels hard to make our horses go away from us if they really enjoy being in our personal space. It can feel hard to be a little bit clearer with your ass because like, like I said before, what if you make a mistake? What if you do all of the wrong things or what if you damage their relationship or what if you go too far with it or whatever? And like I said before, your horse is always going to be the best judge, but I really want you to give yourself a big sense of compassion because all of these things are coming up for you because they're things that have been conditioned into you right? So they're things that have like popped up in the past. They're parts of your shadow that need exploring because deep down inside, there's a part of you that might believe these things to be true or might be worried about these things. So whenever I have a student and like a what if is coming up for them or they have something that's popping into their head, I really like to explore it and be like, okay, how does this feel in, my, in your body? What is that? What is your brain telling you in that moment? And why do you think that's coming up for you? And where do you think that came from? And what do you think you really need to hear in order to move forwards? Like, do you need time to further explore that and do some deeper healing work so that you can feel more comfortable moving forwards? Do you need to just give yourself a a sense of validation and like debunk whatever's coming up in your head and remind yourself like, no, I'm good. I've got this. And give yourself a real clear plan to be like, okay, This is what I'm worried about happening. Here's how I'm going to avoid that happening in the first place. And if it does happen, this is what I'm going to do. So let's just say if you were going to go, okay, I'm going to set a boundary that my horse can't invade my personal space bubble. And you're worried about damaging your relationship with your horse and then never wanting to be scratched from the head or whatever again, you might go, okay, that's my what if. I'm worried about that. However, what if that does happen? No, what you're going to do first, sorry, we're going to go, how can we mitigate that from happening? Okay, so we're going to start slow. So maybe rather than expecting your horse to be all the way away from you, if they've been so used to being so close to you, you start in a situation where you ask them to go a little bit further away from you and you set a really clear back up to body language cue. You can even use protected contact, like a fence between the two of you to help set that boundary clearer and make it easier for you to work on that at a closer distance, but still achieving the same result, right? So you can slowly shape out that behavior and do it in a way that's not too abrupt, not too abrasive and not too forceful. Then if you think, okay, well, what if it does happen? And what if I damage my relationship with my horse and I ask too much and I'm like, oh my goodness, the end of the world. What are you gonna do in that situation? You're going to reflect on that was a learning opportunity. You were doing the best you could with the knowledge you had. And now it's time to go, okay, how can I move forwards in a different way? What do they and I need in order to move forwards? Do we need to build up our relationship bank account again and spend more time together doing things that they like to build up the rapport? Or do I need additional support? Do I feel a little bit stuck in how to go about this? What do I really need in order to get from where we are to where we would like to be? You know, and I think once you explore those different options with your brain, then and with yourself, then it feels a lot easier to go about doing the task rather than someone just saying, oh, just get over it and just do it. You'll be okay. I mean, sure, in some situations, just doing it works. But if you feel like this thing keeps coming up for you and it's a flavor of yours that keeps on repeating, then like take the time to explore it and get to know yourself and just know that there's nothing wrong with you. And I'm going to keep saying this. There's nothing wrong with you for feeling the way that you're feeling. And it's all going to be okay. And I was chatting with my students about this this week. And uh, I really think a good um, relationship dynamic that we can explore when we're thinking about horse-human relationships and the partnerships that look flowy and effortless and harmonious and they're using light pressure and their intention is just pure. And there's like just this dialogue going on between the horse and the human. I really feel like it's like a beautiful dance. Right. And if you think about a ballroom dancing couple, right, there's one person in the 
couple who's like leading the dance and the other one is following, right? So in order for you to kind of have this beautiful flowy connection with your horse, you're the one essentially asking them most of the time to to do these behaviors. You need to be in that leading kind of energy. It doesn't mean that you're the leader and you're demanding them to do these things, but you need to have this sense of like confidence and presence about you. And the best way to get that is to do your practice ahead of time. So like I said, create the plan, work out exactly how you're going to navigate your situation, work out the stuff that's coming up in your head. And if you feel like you're still worried about doing these things with your horse, practice doing it in front of a mirror, practice like recording yourself on video, practicing the different cues that you're going to use and role play the situation. This also works really beautifully if you do this with other people and things like that, because if you apply the same cue with another person and they're like, I don't know what you meant by that, then your horse is probably going to feel a similar way, right? So you can really get creative. And I know that that can also bring some stuff up to the surface. But once again, it's just another thing to kind of remind yourself to try and be kind to yourself, have compassion for where you're at, and just give yourself what you need in order to move through these different layers and different thoughts and things like that that come up into your head. Because what we're doing with our horses especially when we're trying to have this collaborative partnership, we want to listen to them and all of that. Like it's, it's a real journey and it's something that brings a lot of stuff up to the surface and it's all okay. It ends up being a really beautiful part of the process, but at sometimes it can feel really hard and that's all right. But there are tools that you can explore and that you can use in order to work through the stuff that's coming up in your head and also feel not so alone and also be really beautiful, like have formed this beautiful connection with your horse and where you can use light levels of pressure and really clear intentions and it can feel flowy. Okay, so really just to summarize this chat we're about boundaries and using pressure, it's really just about tuning into what feels right for you and your horse. If you were your horse, How would you like to be asked a question? What do you feel like is the most effective way in order to move towards the answer that you're looking for? What are your values? How much pressure do you feel comfortable using? Um, What do you feel like you need to step into being this more like leading the dance kind of role? And just explore what comes up for you because you might... Find yourself in a place after you explore those things where you go, actually, I feel more comfortable doing it in this way than I originally thought because I th- I can see now that that is actually going to be beneficial and what my horse needs and what I need in order for us to get to the next level in our training. Okay, so I hope this was a helpful chat. I'm going to pull a card for us all from my equestrian oracle deck and we'll just see what comes through. Okay. So the card is perfect, which is rise again. So this card, I'm just going to read the message from my Oracle guidebook. So rise again, ready. It's normal to have periods of your life where you feel lost, doubtful or stuck, but it's important to remember that this feeling doesn't last forever. We always have the opportunity to rise again and move on should we choose to do so. Perhaps you've experienced this with your horse before. What you were trying just simply wasn't working and you had no idea what to do. This led you to question yourself and the abil- and your ability, which can feel horrible, but that discomfort likely allowed you to make a change. It forced you to seek the information and support you needed to move forward and lift yourself up. And once you did that, everything changed. This card is calling you to realize that the moments where you feel low are happening to you for a reason. They appear in your life to teach you valuable lessons, but these lessons only appear once you decide to rise again. It's time for you to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and seek what you need in order to move forwards in your life. You are ready to rise. And I feel like that is a perfect card for this episode for anyone that's listening and feeling really stuck and not knowing what to do and not knowing what's right and what's wrong and getting all stuck. Like every situation is so different for every horse and rider combination. And what works for you on one day might need to be tweaked the next day. It's all a case-to-case 
dependent situation and it's going to differ on a day-to-day basis okay and I know that can feel really frustrating to hear because you want like oh do this 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 and everything will be perfect all the time unfortunately we're in a relationship with our horse and it's just it's not that black and white um I'm going to pull another card from I've got these new journal prompt cards which I'm really excited about they've got a beautiful journal prompt on the front and affirmations on the back they're not ready to sell yet I'm waiting for their packaging to arrive But I'm going to pick a prompt for you all to ponder um, and then I'll let you go with this episode. Okay. Okay, the prompt is perfect. So we've got the old stories I'm choosing to let go of are and then I want you to write down for each story why it's no longer true. So here's the card. And then on the back, The affirmation is people and animals do change. So whatever the old stories are that you're holding on to about yourself or about your horse, just know that you and your horse do, like you can change. You've already changed so much throughout your lives so far. And it is possible for you to rise again and go on to the next phase of your journey. So hope that was helpful. If you want to chat about this more, contact me on social media, um, hit me up on at on Instagram at Felicity Davies with an underscore at the end or on Facebook Felicity Davies Horsemanship. Love to chat with you and I hope you're having a beautiful day and I'll talk to you again soon.